action. Action, alright. So we're doing today, uh, getting a little bit of the oil lines put into the buggy here for the new motor. The new motor's a 2387, so it's got a big crank in it, splash a lot of oil around, so we're going to try to get a drive sump set up in here. This is running real good on a buddy of mine's race car, so we swap it over to this car. He's gone to the Honda side. He's got a little Acura motor in his car now. So if you look over here, we got our oil cooler down in here mounted up to the side of the tank. This is our dry sump. And we'll have a oil filter mount underneath here under the dry sump. And uh, what I was going to show everybody today was putting together some AN lines on some of the stainless braided. This stuff's not cheap, but it's really, really durable. Uh, you know, it doesn't get snagged and break and cut, and you don't have to worry about it fraying and wearing. Um, this is a Dash 8 size. Uh, quick on AN line fittings. AN is a term came up, I think, back in the 40s uh, by the military. They wanted to do like a, a new type of fitting. It's basically like a 37 degree flare fitting essentially and the AN stands for Army Navy because the Army and the Navy got together and they collaborated on this effort and so they came up with a standard and the way you measure ANs is the outside diameter of the AN is, so if you had like a dash 8 or a dash 10 those are in increments of sixteenths of an inch so if you had a dash 2 that would be basically quarter inch so that's how AN works but um, it's it's pretty easy stuff to work with if you you know it looks special and aeronautical and crazy but it's it's really super dumb simple to work with so I'm just going to show you a couple fittings real quick we already made the fitting coming out of our uh, oil filter this goes into the oil cooler it's going to come out of the oil cooler into the oil can and then it's going to go feed out of our oil can back into the motor and from the motor it feeds into the oil filter. So we're filtering everything, cooling the oil off, putting it back into our dump, and then we'll feed it back into the motor. And basically the motor has, it doesn't use an internal pump on the motor. It's driven by the cam still by that internal gear that has an external pump on it. So uh, just show you real quick, we, <laughs> the easiest way to cut this AN stuff is basically with a cutoff wheel. I'm just using a 045 wheel, a little DeWalt wheel. You just hold your line taut and just whoop, zip right through it. It cuts like butter. Uh, if you start getting crimpers and cutters and stuff on it, it'll start crimping the tube down and smash the inside of the rubber hose or uh, it'll start fraying the ends. But you can see these ends are pretty good. And what you do, you know, if you get a couple little loose pieces or whatnot, you'll just run back through here and snip them off with a pair of side cutters. It makes it nice and clean. So, on this side we got a fit in here. So it's, this is a dash 8 fitting. These are basically two piece fittings. So the red piece will screw off of here. And what you'll do with this it's got really fine threads on here. You'll uh, take your fitting and if you've got nice clean edges in here you should be able to slip these. It's, it's a pretty tight fit. It's beveled in here. So you want to get this, push it on like that, kind of twist it as you go. And you'll see on the inside here where the rubber meets up it meets flush with the end of the fitting. These are the aluminum fittings. You just get your WD-40 out, spray a little WD-40 onto the rubber so it's nice and squishy. You shove the other side of the fitting in there and you just thread these together. And basically these are reusable and you can get industrial type AN fittings and those are going to be a crimp on and most industrial AN hose that you, or they call it uh, FIC or JIC, don't quote me on that, uh, but it's 37 degree flare fitting and it's basically the same thing as an AN type fitting but the, it's all steel or they have stainless and those run on sometimes stainless braided but they'll have Teflon liners and the difference between automotive and industrial are industrial uses a Teflon liner 
for those hydraulics, they can't use rubber liners. Uh, for automotive uses, they have a lot of rubber liners, which all this is. It's really, really flexible. So I'm going to use Kate Dash 8. It takes a 7 8 wrench. These are my special AN wrenches that don't mar AN. Not really. I don't have the money to spend on that after buying all the fittings. Otherwise, you would have a AN wrenches. They're basically aluminum and they don't mar up your pretty blue and red finishes. This is going on an off road buggy that'll never make a show circuit, so I don't really care. Just tighten these down here. They make really cool tools for AN stuff that you put in a vise and it clamps the hose into the fitting, and then you can just tighten the adapter side down into it. So we got that nice and tight. And then, uh, so this hose we made, it's going to come out of our oil cooler and go onto the inside of our oil can here. So just screw these on. It's going to get routed down here and then it's going to go like this. On this oil system, you know, it's a little bit weird because most of the time you would have a dry sump is kind of level with the motor. You want to make sure that the dry sump can doesn't get too much higher than the oil sump on your motor. Otherwise you have a feed problem. You got a lot of oil sitting up high. Eventually it'll drain back into the case and it'll fill the motor up quick. It only takes a couple days. So if you're going to mount a can up high, you can either do one or two things. You can put a shutoff valve in line with the front of the oil pump or on this can I put a, a shutoff valve here on the outside of the oil catch can. So you can turn this on and off and this is a little bit dangerous because if you forget to turn that on and you start the motor and start going you can cook a motor up. So you got to make sure that just part of your startup procedure and part of your maintenance is that you make sure that ball valve is good and uh, that you're always opening that up. You'll, you'll toast the motor real quick if you don't. So, uh, so that's basically it. I just wanted to show a couple of AN fittings, you know, how we set these lines up, uh, you know, why we're using them on the buggies. And uh, this, like I said, eventually we'll have a, a motor sitting here with the oil pump. We'll have a line coming out of the, out of the oil pump. It'll go into the filter and then it goes out of the filter like we just did into the uh, oil cooler. This is a B&M high-tech oil cooler. And then from out of that oil cooler, it comes back into my catch can. This catch can then feeds back into the outside or the input side of the pump. So uh, and that, and that comes out the bottom. But we're going to vent the can off, change the vent up around it. But uh, that's the update on the buggy. We got a new axle that came in today. so do that. Alrighty.